Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com. I hope you are doing well and I hope you have all that you need during this unusual time. So far, so good here. We're being extremely cautious and staying indoors. I hope that some of you have had a chance to check out the special tutorial that I published on Saturday. Today I'm here with a fun project for you and this project is perfect for children. So if you have grandchildren or your own children are home and out of school at this time, this would be a wonderful opportunity for you to teach them how to sew a very functional and practical product. And it will allow both you and your child to practice your seam allowances and straight stitch. Let me show you what we're gonna be making. Ah, uh, isn't it fun? It is a napkin caddy because all of the napkins are sold out in my area. And I do not want to have to start using our paper towels because those are equally as hard to come by. So the large dinner napkins or heirloom napkins, which we made and I'll link to down below for you are perfect for special occasions and uh, big meals with guests, none of which are happening right now. So what I needed was average napkins, regular size napkins that are perfect for your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so what I did was take eight inch squares and then I put those right sides facing and created these little miniature napkins or I'm calling these everyday napkins. And then I figure we eat three meals a day and there are four of us. And so that's where I started with the quantity, but I'm just gonna keep making them until I tire of this particular project so that we have a nice stash of them on hand. Now you can of course put these in the washing machine but I am thinking what I'm going to do is hand wash them in, you know, just like a large bowl with really hot, like boiling water. Um, I'll let, I'll put the boiling water in the dish with some dish soap and then let them soak, maybe stir them with a wooden spoon. And then as the water cools, I'll rinse them out and I'm going to um, just let those air dry and the reason I want to do that is I don't want to get like a lot of fabric softener or um, laundry detergent in them since we're going to be putting them right up to our face and such but I do want to have a way to sterilize them and then the second reason that I'm going to hand wash is because air drying is going to give them a little bit more rigidity and they'll feel more like our paper napkins. So that's my thoughts on how to care for these. Then in addition to teaching you how to sew the napkin, which is a perfect project for the kids, I'm also gonna teach you how to sew the sweet little caddy that holds these perfectly. And I just want to give a shout out and a special thanks to Sewspire patron and subscriber Kathy. Kathy recently traveled to Australia. In fact, she was there during the wildfires and she brought me back this amazing Australian fabric. And so Kathy, I was saving this for a really special project. I am so grateful for your kindness and I just want you to know that you will be with us every night and be well thought of and your gift is graciously appreciate it. So we're going to begin with the napkin. Again, this is super simple, perfect for kids. And for me, actually, I let Isabel do about half of them and then I finished the off and it was kind of like that mindless meditative sewing. So it was really nice for me to just be able to 
keep sewing and not have to think too much. And right now I think that's the kind of projects that we want, right? So begin with two eight inch squares and you can see how gorgeous this fabric is. There's so many colors, just so many interesting things. Again, fun for everybody, right? Um, Isabel asked me which animal I would be, and maybe Kathy will comment and tell us for sure the name, but I would be this one right there, right now. Yeah, I think that's what we need right now. We need to all harness that, yeah. So anyways, you take your two eight inch squares and you put those right sides facing and then using a very narrow seam allowance. I wanna say three eighths of an inch, but I think it's even less than that because I just line the fabric up right with the edge of the machine foot. You use whatever you're comfortable with, just be consistent. I'm gonna stitch around three sides and I'm gonna leave one side open to turn and press. Okay, so I stitched around all three sides and then I'm just going to turn that right side out and then press and turn that open edge inward approximately a half an inch. And I have one here that is already pressed. The turtle would be my second favorite graphic or animal or creature. And then I have that top edge pressed. And so now I'm just gonna put this back on the machine deck starting with that open edge and top stitch all the way around. And then that completes the napkin. You can see they're super simple to sew, perfect for kids. You just might have to help them with the ironing and then obviously stand nearby to make sure everything's under control. And you can make a lot of these in a short amount of time as Isabel and I have. And then now I wanna show you how to make the cute little caddy that holds these absolutely perfect when they are folded in half. If you wanted to fold them in quarters, you could put them in there and probably hold even more of those. But I have right now, I have 15 finished and in mine and there's still plenty of room. I could fit a lot more in there. So it's a good, a good size caddy with room for the larger family. Little caddy, you're also going to be working with the eight inch squares. Cut one of your eight inch squares into quarters to create four four inch squares. Those are going to be the sides of your caddy. And then you're going to take three of your eight inch squares and cut those in half to create the base and the longer sides. And these pieces measure four by eight. So in total, you need six four by eights and four four by fours. And this process just uses my T method of construction. So we will begin by crafting the interior. So take one of the longer pieces and position one of the side panels right sides facing right across the top and then stitch down that short edge. And so now you have two pieces of material joined. Take a remaining second small side and attach that right sides facing to the opposite short side and stitch. Now you have a tri-panel with two short sides attached. Set that down for a moment and then you're going to take two of the longer pieces. This accent print is going to be the base of this. So I'm going to take the base 
and the remaining long side, right sides facing, and just stitch down one of the long edges. And now I have those pieces joined, and I want to now bring back over the tri-folding panel, and I'm going to take the base piece, which you remember is the lighter piece, and I'm going to align that with the trifold panel and center that right in the middle. So these sides are hanging off there like little wings. And I'm just going to stitch seam to seam. And then when you open that up, it looks like a nice fat T, hence the name T method. Then you're just going to take the short side and align it with the corresponding side and go ahead and pin that in place and then do that with the opposite side and at first it, it may feel a little awkward but after you get this side pinned when you hold that up you will definitely be able to see your caddy taking a rectangular shape and that's how you'll know you have the right pieces connected then go ahead and just stitch down both of those sides that you just lined up for for this interior seam I am again just lining that fabric right up with the edge of my sewing machine foot and now you can really see that taking shape the only thing you need to do is line up the side of the base with the base of the side there. I like to just put my fingers in there and pull that tight, get that centered, and then stitch seam to seam and repeat that on both sides. All right, and now the interior is complete. I did not use any batting or interfacing for the interior. I am using quilt batting for the exterior, which comes together in exactly the same way. I am going to change the camera angle for you as I assemble that exterior so you can see this T-Method process one more time. For the interior, just fold over that top edge about a half an inch. You can press if you like. Normally, as long as you're not using interfacing, the cotton fabric presses pretty nice just with a nail, but that choice is yours. So I'm gonna set my interior aside for a few minutes, adjust the camera, and show you how to craft the exterior, which again, I did back with some quilt batting. So the first step is to take one of the long panels and position the short side, right sides facing, and stitch down that short edge. And now you have a two-way panel. On the opposite side of that two-way panel, you will take your other short panel and position that right sides facing and stitch down that short edge. And now you have a three-way panel. You're going to set that aside, take your remaining two long panels, position those right sides facing and stitch down one of the long sides. And now you have a two-way panel here. You're going to bring back over your tri-panel and center that two-way panel on that right sides facing and stitch seam to seam. That's going to create your giant T. Then you're going to take the sides and pin those to the opposite corresponding side.
and that's when you will definitely be able to tell that all of the parts are connected correctly because it's going to look like a rectangle. And so now go ahead and attach those sides that you've pinned in place. And so now the last thing that you need to do is close up the bottom there and you just align everything and then stitch seam to seam. And then for the exterior, you're just going to turn that right sides out and poke out all your corners. And then because we didn't line the interior with any kind of batting or interfacing, we should be okay just opening up these seams and folding that over. If you feel better about it, you can trim that. Then you just go ahead and take some pins and fold that top edge over about a half an inch. There you go. And then now you just need to fit your interior inside of that exterior. And I just first just lay it in there and then I like to start at the sides, aligning those corners first. And then once I have both of the sides aligned, then I will come back in and tidy up those longer sides and hopefully all of your side seams do align and pull on the longer sides and usually you can get a little bit of give there if you need and then i lift that up and kind of fiddle with it, that interior lining pull it nice and tight and once you're happy with how everything is laying in there then I just give it a good smoothing because that interior will grab that batting. And then the next step is to put this up on the machine deck and just stitch all the way around. You can remove your machine deck for this. Because the side panels are so narrow, you can also just lay it up there and flatten it out as you go. I usually start right on a short side. And then the caddy is complete. Again, just smooth that and stretch it out as needed. If you did not want to put napkins in this, you also have the option of folding over that edge there and you can create a little more shallow caddy that might be nice for organizing utensils and such or office supplies or drawers. So there's a lot of options for this little caddy beyond the napkins. I also want to encourage you to experiment and play with different size sides because you can create larger and smaller caddies to suit your needs perfectly. So again, I want to just show you the finished project here, it holds all those awesome napkins. Special thank you to Kathy for sending me this fabric. I hope you approve of the use for it and I'm excited to hear what everyone in my family thinks of the napkins this evening when we sit down to eat dinner. I will have those on the table. Before I say goodbye, I just want to give you a look at some of these prints. So I'm just going to Hold those up and turn them around so you can see how gorgeous this material is. 
and I still have quite a bit left. And then you can tell me in the comments which animal or depiction is your favorite. This bird is pretty fabulous too. And the flowers, oh, you know I love flowers. And maybe Kathy knows the names of all of these animals and can share with us too. Really, really pretty. Hope you enjoyed the project and will share photos with us over on the group Facebook page. This Friday at 2 p.m. I am going to be doing a live streaming over on the group Facebook page. So if you are a member over there, I hope that you will join me then. I think it's just going to be a chat, just a little check-in to make sure everyone is doing good. And give us a little opportunity for everyone to connect and know that all is well where they are. And then I will also be publishing my weekly blog post on Friday over at sospire.com, behind the scenes with Andrea. And that's when I have the look through the design book. And that is generally is an unpublished video. So you will not get a notification for that when I upload. You just can head over to sospire.com and that's where you can find that video. And then I'll see the rest of you next Tuesday for another sewing project. Until then, as always, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Have a beautiful week, everyone, and be well.